Hi, and welcome to lesson two in our phases of matter unit. Here we're gonna talk about heating and cooling curves, the characteristic shapes that we see on graphs when we uniformly heat or cool a particular substance. This is what we call a heating curve. If I were to put in a constant amount of heat into a sample of a substance, starting as a solid and going up through when it was a gas, I would get this characteristic shape. This is true for any substance on the planet, though of course the particular temperature points involved would differ depending upon the substance involved. We're always going to start as a solid, and as we put heat into a solid, the temperature is going to increase. But eventually we're going to hit a flat line. That's of course called melting, where we go through that solid to liquid transition. Once we're done melting our substance, as we continue to put heat in, our temperature is going to continue to increase. At that point, the substance is entirely a liquid. But again, at some point, we're going to hit that flat line. That's where we go through the boiling process, which is, of course, the liquid to gas transition. And then finally, once the substance is entirely boiled, as we continue to invest heat, we're going to continue to have the temperature increase in the gas phase. You absolutely need to be able to look at a heating curve like this and understand what's happening at which place. So take a moment, sketch this curve if you want, and label it the way that I've labeled it here. I think you'll find that it's very helpful going forward. I have a few questions about heating curves that I'd like you to try to answer on your own. We'll discuss the answers to these questions either in the comments below this video or you can always bring them into class. My first question is, why isn't the temperature changing during phase changes? Remember that we're adding heat, in the case of this heating curve, at a constant rate. So how come our temperature no longer changes when we get to those phase change points? Why does it flatline? The next question I have is, why does it take so much longer to go from a liquid to a gas than it does from a solid to a liquid? If you look at the length of the lines, you can see that our liquid to gas phase change is considerably longer than our solid to liquid phase change. My question to you is, why is that? And finally, what would a cooling curve look like? I think that you should probably take a moment and pause this video and sketch what you think a cooling curve should look like, starting with a gas and ending as a solid. Take a moment, draw it, and label every part of it. I think that'll be very helpful for you before we move on. This particular heating curve is for water. My question to you is what evidence supports the conclusion that this particular curve is for water? Pause this video and take a moment, write down any thoughts that you have, and then when you're ready, let's move on and I'll give you the answer. So the answer to this question is in the melting point and the boiling point for this particular substance. I'm going to zoom in so that you can see what the melting point and boiling point are of this substance. If you look, you can see that this substance is melting at a temperature of 273 degrees Kelvin, which of course is zero degrees Celsius, and it's boiling at a temperature of 373 degrees Kelvin or 100 degrees Celsius. Those are the characteristic melting points and boiling points for water. And so that's all of the evidence we need to really support our conclusion that what we see here on the graph is in fact data from the heating of water. There are other kinds of questions that we can answer based on heating curves as well. Here's an example. How many minutes pass from the first appearance of the liquid phase until the substance is entirely in the gas phase? Again, take a moment, write down your answer, and then let the video play so that we can see what the actual answer is. So the thing to do here is to take a moment and look at the question and understand what the question is asking us. The first appearance of the liquid phase is going to be when the substance enters the melting process, which is shown here as interval A on this graph. The substance will be entirely in the gas phase once it's done boiling, which is shown here as interval D on the graph. So we need to know the total amount of time necessary to go from interval A to interval D. In order to do that, we have to figure out the times. Interval D is at 34 minutes, and interval A is at 4 minutes. So 34 minus 4 gives us 30 minutes total time as the answer to this particular question. Does that make sense? Try this one. For how many minutes is the water completely in a phase with an indefinite shape and a definite volume? Pause the video, write down your answer, and then let it play to see what the actual answer is. A substance with an indefinite shape and a definite volume is going to be a liquid. So we need to know at what point the substance is entirely liquid and where that stops on our heating curve. It starts at interval B and it ends at interval C. If we look at our times here, interval B is at 10 minutes and interval C is at 18 minutes. So 18 minus 10 gives us an answer of eight minutes for the answer to this question. Thanks so much for watching our discussion of heating and cooling curves. Take a moment and make sure that you can do each of the following here at the end of this video. Can you identify all of the phases and phase changes on a heating or cooling curve? 
can you answer questions related to different phases and phase changes if you're given a particular heating or cooling curve with which to make those answers? If you can, fantastic. You're good to go. If not, take a moment, write down any questions that you have, and you can leave those questions in the comments below the video, or you can always get in touch with me through the information on the video. Thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it. Have a great day.